Welcome to Wonderland, Alice. Kruger! Well, it ain't Dr. Seuss. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Ursha, and this week we are doing another horror review. That's right, this week we're reviewing A Nightmare on Elm Street for The Dream Master. Directed by Rennie Harlan and starring Lisa Wilcox as Alice, Tuesday Night as Kristen Parker, and of course Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger. So for me this is like the last of the good Elm Street films. Um, it does kind of go downhill from here, in my opinion. I know a lot of people love Wes Craven's New Nightmare, but personally, I didn't care much for it. Uh, I know it's like blasphemy, but it's just my opinion. To me, this is the last good Elm Street movie. Uh, outside of, of course, Freddy vs. Jason. That, that I did enjoy, but uh, the last in the series of Nightmare on Elm Street films. Uh, so... The film begins with a nice dream sequence, and there's a lot of good dream sequences in this film. And it's really nicely shot, it's got a great mood, great atmosphere. And we see uh, Tuesday Night in the role of Kristen Parker this time, taking over for Patricia Arquette in uh, Dream Warriors. I kind of wish Patricia Arquette did return for this film, but it is what it is. Uh, Tuesday Night does a pretty decent job. She could have been a little bit better, but she does a decent job. Um, so it's got a nice dream sequence in the beginning where Kristen sees this little girl, you know, one of those jump rope girls with the one, two, Freddy's coming for you, you know. They lead her into the infamous house on Elm Street, once lived in by Nancy Thompson, Heather Langenkamp, of course, from the original film. And all those horrible events that took place in the original film took place in that house. Um, so she goes inside the house and uh, it's got some really nice visual effects. You see glass breaking and she like flies in the air and stuff. <laughs> really cool stuff. Uh, very creepy. Um, and of course in this film... Uh, it becomes a little more comical with Robert Englund and the one-liners left and right, you know. But there are some really good ones in it, you know. I have to admit. Um, but yeah, it does get a little crazy. It does get a little comical, even more so than the previous film, Dream Warriors. And even in that film, it started to get a little much at times. But here it goes even further. Um, but I'd say it doesn't go quite over the top, you know. <laughs> I feel like it's just enough, you know. Any more, and this would have been a bad movie. Where, and that's where Five comes in. <laughs> that's where Five, the Dream Child, comes in, which also stars Lisa Wilcox in the role of Alice. So here she's our heroine. Here she's our spoiler alert, final girl. Uh, yeah, she's our final girl. She's our heroine of, of the film. I think she does a pretty good job, uh, as well as Part 5. She's one of the few things I like about Elm Street 5. And uh, here, you know, she starts off as just this kind of a shy, timid, uh, girl-next-door type. You know, she's very much kind of the Laurie Strode type of character, kind of a, a bookworm, a good student. You know, she works hard. She's a waitress. Um... And she's good friends with Kristen Parker. And uh, we also meet up with a couple of the stars of Dream Warriors. We meet up with Joey and Kincaid, the Dream Warriors, left from Part 3. Uh, so that was really cool that they got them to come back. So it is a nice continuation of the events from the last film. And that's one of the things I love about Nightmare on Elm Street. It's got pretty good continuity compared to some of the other franchises like Halloween and... Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where the continues, continuity is just all over the place. <laughs> uh, 
So that's, that is one of the good things about Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, and this film does continue the events of Part 3, and I enjoy that. But it does introduce the new character of Alice, as played by Elisa Wilcox. And so, uh, she is friends with Kristen and her buddies Joey and Kincaid. And uh, Kristen's still having the brutal nightmares, and she's afraid that Freddy's going to come back. Uh, but Joey and Kincaid are like telling her, what are you doing? Uh, he's gone, he's dead. Um, feel the boiler, it's cold, you know, when they... She brings them into their dream once again, and they're like, What are you doing? Why are you bringing us into the dream again? De Freddy's dead. Leave it alone. Um, but of course, that is not the case, you know. <laughs> uh, we see uh, we see Kincaid uh, has a dream on his own, and uh, he ends up running into Freddy. Freddy is brought back to life by his dog, no less, and takes a whiz and shoots fire. And uh, that opens the grave of Freddy. It's kind of silly and why it's me and one of like the old Hammer films or something. Uh, the uh, the ground opens up and uh, Freddy's bones start coming together and the flesh starts coming together. And Freddy's back. The dream demon, if you will, Freddy Krueger. Uh, and he takes out Kincaid and, and he's like... Uh, only two more. Uh, so he sets his sights on Joey, and he sets his sight on Kristen, uh, all the original Dream Warriors, and then all we have left is Alice, as played by Lisa Wilcox. Uh, so once the others are picked off from leftover from Dream Warriors, we've got Alice, who starts out real timid and shy, but as the movie goes on, some of her friends start falling victim to Freddy and as that happens she becomes more hard and she becomes more of like a warrior you know uh, she starts having the same dreams too and she starts uh, learning from her mistakes and learning from her friends mistakes and also her brother who was a victim of Freddy Krueger his brother is kind of like a real cheesy Definitely a real 80s type character, like a mix of Tom Cruise and uh, Charlie Sheen and stuff. Like a, and he's like a, <laughs> he takes karate and stuff, and it's so funny you see him like working out. He's like, hi ya, hi ya, <laughs> you know. And he's trying to train his sister Alice, and she's like, here, try it, hi ya. I'm like, I had to laugh. <laughs> I thought his character was silly and some of the others were kind of silly too. And there's this character, Debbie, who's got the classic huge 80s style hairstyle, you know, like like one of the hair metal bands. I just thought that was kind of funny. So this movie still feels very much 80s <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, as the film progresses, Alice becomes more aware, more alert. And she becomes like a dream warrior. So she's taken over the, the mantle that Kristen left. Um, and what's cool is as Freddy starts picking off uh, her friends one by one, all including her brother. Uh, and uh, Brooke Thies, who plays Debbie in the film, uh, <laughs> has a real bad nightmare. And she meets up with Freddy while she's bench pressing. She's really into working out and stuff and fitness. And uh, he's like, he he grabs the bench, uh, he grabs the uh, the dummies, and puts them down on her, and you see her elbows like rip, and it's like, ooh, that's really nasty, and bend backwards, and these things like come out of her arms, and what happens is she starts turning into a roach, and then her feet stick to the ground, and you see her growing into this giant roach. And then you see from outside the that it's a roach motel, and then <laughs> and then Freddy has the classic line, and you see him with the roach motel in his hand. He's like, "You can check in, but you can check out." And he crushes it, and see the ooze come out. It's nasty. That's one of my favorite lines in the history of the franchise, right like there. And it's one of my favorite dream sequences. One of my favorite death scenes. I just. I love the way it's filmed. It's really gross and it's it's just awesome. I love the the effects of that scene and the payoff with that awesome line. 
Love it. There's also a great se uh, dream sequence uh, with Alice and her girlfriend um, when they have like this recurring dream. Uh, so first you see Alex in the uh, movie theater getting ready to watch a movie and ends up coming on the screen is the diner that she works at. <laughs> She's like, what the hell's going on? But it's all broken down. It looks like a ghost town. And it, and it looks like she's watching some old black and white 1950s movie. And then uh, what happens is she gets brought into the movie screen. And it's really cool effects where you see her. She's trying to hang on the balcony. And there's a really cool camera shot when you see from underneath her as she flies into the movie screen. I just thought it was really well done. It's really cool the way they filmed that scene. And uh, I, I love how they keep uh, doing the same thing. It's almost like Groundhog Day. And, <laughs> and she's like, you know, we got to go get Debbie. You know, that's I'm driving. And she gets in the car. And then her boyfriend's like, I have the funniest feeling we've done this before. <laughs> you know? But it's a really cool, the recurring dream thing. I like that. So there's a lot of cool dream sequences in the film. And I enjoy that. Uh, and I enjoy this film. I think it's, I think it's the last good Elm Street film in my opinion. Uh, so for me the series ends at like four and then it goes downhill from there. And I enjoy the performance of uh, Alice uh, played by Lisa Wilcox. She's good in this film as well as in Nightmare on Elm Street 5 The Dream Child. Uh, I thought Tuesday night was a little bit weak as compared to Patricia Arquette. She's a much better actress. Uh, so I was kind of disappointed at that. And yes it does beget a does become a little too comical with the one-liners left and right by Freddy Krueger. He becomes kind of a cartoon character, almost like a stand-up comedian, and it, it does get a little ridiculous in this movie. Um, but not so much that it like really bothers me, uh, but I feel in part five is where they go over the line with it. Here it's like not too far, it's just at the edge, you know. <laughs> um, but the film uh, is very competently directed by Rennie Harlan. It's very uh, stylish the way it's directed. I love the dream sequences. Um, and I like the performances. And uh, Robert England is just great as always. And uh, his makeup looks freaking phenomenal, I must say. The makeup job on Freddy in this movie is some of the best in the series. Uh, so at any rate... Run and buy Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. Directed by Rennie Harlan, starring Lisa Wilcox, Tuesday Night, and of course Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger. So, run and buy Nightmare on Elm Street 4, guys. That's my Horror Corner movie review, and thank you for joining me, Sean Patrick Urshan, in the Horror Corner. Tune in and stay scared.